Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of our Anchored in the Word Morning Reflection. And if you have a Bible, let's turn together to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Again, if you have a Bible, let's turn together to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and we're looking at verses 18 through 22 together this morning. Let's read it. It says, I said in mine heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, that God might man manifest them, that they might see that they themselves are beasts. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts, even one that befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man hath no preeminence over a beast, for all is vanity. All go into one place, all are of the dust, all turn to the dust again. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works. That is his portion. Who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? Now we... We look at these verses here, we need to remember that they're really written in the context of what we talked about the last time we were together. And one of the things that Solomon was lamenting was the fact that when he looks at life, he sees injustice. He sees people that mistreat others, people who have no regard for the value of other people. They don't have the value, they don't have regard for the value of justice and the importance of recognizing that we respond to one another equitably. And so, in the light of that discussion, he moves to another section here. And in this section, he says, there's something I wish that those who were unjust could see. And you say, well, what is it that Solomon wanted them to see? Well, our summary statement really tells us what he wanted them to see. He wanted them to reflect on the fact that they are limited. He wanted them to recognize that there's a God in heaven who is eternal, and their lives are very short. And in the light of eternity, they're actually very insignificant. And the people that were treating others unjustly needed to realize that their lives were like a vapor. And so with that in mind, let's look at what Solomon says in the passage here. The first thing we're going to see is this. When we are unjust, we are actually ignoring our limitations. It's as if we're living with an attitude that we're going to live forever and there's never going to be a time where things are brought to somebody else's attention who's above us. There's not going to be a day of reckoning. It, that's basically the way that we're living when we treat others unjustly. He puts it like this in verse 18. He says, I said in mine heart concerning the estates of the sons of men, that God might manifest them, or he might expose to them a reality that they're not perceiving with their eyes that they might see that they themselves are beasts. Now, when he says that they're beasts, he's not suggesting that people and animals are of the same value to God. He's saying, you are a creature. You are not the creator. You are not eternal. You don't last forever on this planet. There's going to be a time when you die. And after you die, your body that you've used to abuse other people that you've used to do evil things, it's going to turn back into dirt. That's the reality that he's pointing out. And he's saying, I want people to recognize this when they have lost their sense of how short their life is. He's reflecting on the previous discussion, and he's drawing from that discussion into this discussion. And basically what he's saying, you know, it's an absolute tragedy that people, enjoy, and, and, that people ignore justice and they act as if their lives are going to last forever. We need to recognize that our lives are short. There's another passage that I think of that's really connected to this one. And that's what James says in James chapter 4, verses 13 to 16. He talks about the folly of presumption. And he says this, Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. He says, listen up. When you are presumptuous and you assume that you have tomorrow, this is what you need to remember. He says, what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little while and vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boasting and all such rejoicing is evil. He's basically saying rather than pres presuming on how much time God's given you, assuming that you will have tomorrow, 
you should recognize there's a God in heaven who actually controls how long I live. And if he gives me tomorrow, then I have tomorrow. And I want to use tomorrow, but I don't want to presume that I have tomorrow. That's really the sense of what he's trying to remind us of. And he's saying, I want people to recognize tomorrow's not guaranteed. And because of that, it will make you think about how you live today. The second thing that he's that he says is this. In one sense, we are really no different than any other creature that God has made. In verse 19, he says, that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth the beasts. Even one thing befalleth them, as the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that one man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. Basically, you could put it this way. Somebody lives to be 50, somebody lives to be 90, somebody lives to be 15, but they all have one thing in common. They had a period of time, the difference was a little bit, the, the length of those days was different, but the end result is the same. That period of time ends. Eventually, we're going to die. Our bodies are going to decay and they're going to rot and they're going to return to the, to the dirt. And he says, you've got to remember that in your pride and in your arrogance and in your presumption against God. Recognize that you are going to live and you are going to die. And you are just a creature. You are not the creator. So in one sense, he's not talking about value and worth. He's not talking about the fact that we're created in the image of God and the animal's not. He's, not. he's not getting into that discussion. He's simply looking at the fact that we are born, we live our lives, we die, and our bodies return to the dirt. And so he wants us to be humbled by that reality. He wants us to think about that. He wants us to live in the light of that. And so that moves us to our third truth. And this third truth really is kind of the point that I really want us to focus on this morning. And that third point is this, we need to cherish and use each moment to its fullest. When I say cherish, the idea is we need to value each day that God gives us. We need to recognize that it's a gift from his hand. We need to value every minute, every day, every hour. Life is a precious thing. It's not something that we're guaranteed to have for a certain amount of time. So we want to make sure that we don't waste it. We want to make sure that we value it. We want to realize that we're not here forever and what we do really matters. So we need to make sure that we do it well and we do it right. He says it in verse 22. Therefore, I perceive there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works. For this is his portion. What shall br what and who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? Notice the idea rejoice in his works. And notice the word portion. A portion means that somebody's given it to him. When he says he needs to rejoice in it, it means he needs to enjoy what he's given. Rather than looking at somebody else's race and wanting what they have and being frustrated that you don't have what you have, we need to be contented. We need to enjoy what God's given us. And we need to recognize that it's a gift from him. I want to remind you of the 90th Psalm where Moses talks about how short our life is. And he says this in verse 12. He says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. We need to be people who walk in wisdom. We need to be people who recognize life is delegated to us. It's not something that we're entitled to. It's a gift from God. It's sustained by God. He protects us and cares for us, and he wants us to use it wisely. But we also need to recognize that it is a gift that is to be enjoyed. And so I want to encourage you this morning, live out each day as a gift from God. Rejoice in the gifts that he gives you of that day. Use it wisely. Walk in wisdom. Walk in righteousness. Walk in humility, recognizing that there's going to be a day that you have no more days on this earth. And there's going to be a day that God calls you into eternity. And so recognize that we should not be wasteful of the life that God gives us. The really, this is the main part of the discussion in front of us. He wants us to be humbled by how short our life is. He wants us to value the importance of each day that we're given. 
He wants us to recognize that each day is a gift. We are not entitled to more. We're not, we're not guaranteed of tomorrow. We need to enjoy those gifts as gifts from God's good hand. And he wants us to value that. He wants us to make sure we don't waste it or take it for granted. I want to ask you this morning, how are you going to live your life today? Are you going to live today as if it doesn't matter? Are you going to live today and not appreciate the value and the blessings of that day? Are you going to live today as if you presume to have more? I hope that we will all live today as if it is a gift from God without guarantee of tomorrow and recognizing that it's a blessing that is to be used wisely in that stewardship that God calls our life. I hope that this has been a challenge to you this morning. It's been a challenge and encouragement to me as I was reading through this passage, as I was jotting down these thoughts, and I was trying to think about how to communicate it to you. If it has been a blessing, I hope that you share that this morning, and I look forward to our lesson, Lord willing, tomorrow. Let's bow together for a word of prayer. Our Father, thank you for the opportunity to study your word today. We recognize that life is a gift. Help us not to be presumptuous. Father, help us to recognize that if we have tomorrow, it's because of your goodness and your kindness. And if we have tomorrow, we should rejoice in it, and we should be faithful in it, and we should use that time wisely. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Well, I hope that you have a great rest of your day, and Lord willing, not presumptuously, we will see you tomorrow. Bye now.